Hi, welcome to this quick webinar about uh, Sparkler. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Sparkler is, it is a web crawler that was developed by um, some students at USC in the data science group. And so it's been open sourced and is available on GitHub and users can get a copy of it, download it, and then use it to crawl and extract textual information uh, from the World Wide Web, um, which can obviously help for people who want to do machine learning, data extraction, uh, data mining, all that type of stuff. So it's a very powerful tool and we're going to have a quick look at how to get going. So the best way to get started is if you go to the Sparkler Wiki, um, there is the build and deploy document, which is sort of a good way to get kick started. And on this page, there's a whole bunch of information about building it, which we're not too interested interested about currently because we want to get you guys going. And so um, what you want to do is scroll down to the bottom of this page and you will find information about deploying it via Docker, which has all the... Um, components pre-built into the images you would expect. And so rather than users having to uh, figure out how to set up a test environment, you can run a Docker container, which is going to be far quicker and easier um, to get you up and running. So what we're going to do is just have a quick look at the Docker. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> we have a quick look at the uh, Docker hub. I think that's because it's just built. Yeah, my latest uh, pushes have just built. So you can find um, the latest Docker image at USC Data Science um, Sparkler latest. And I suggest that's a good way to get going. So all you have to do is Docker pull um, USC data science slash sparkler latest and that will pull down the latest image to uh, run on your local machine uh, which is uh, by far the simplest way of getting going i'm not going to do it because i've just run it locally and i don't want to sit through the pull so um if i go over here and just copy the port mapping because I want to be able to show you guys how the solar components work. So if I just copy that section and paste it in there and then um, run Sparkler, can't find Sparkler uh, latest. Oh, I forgot to add the USC data science bit. So if I just uh, uh, paste fail, um, if I just copy that in there you go so you can't it's not obvious but i'm now inside the docker container rather than in my local shell so if i go back to the wiki page and i copy the solar start command which will bootstrap solar which is obviously a requirement for storing um, the um, data that's extracted if I then in the browser go to localhost 8984, um, you can see that we've got solar up and running and I've just updated it to latest 8.5.0 release and it's preceded with a core, which if I click on query and execute query, you can see it has nothing in it as you would expect. So what we're gonna do is go, is go back to the um, wiki page and I'm going to copy this um, isi.edu uh, routine from the page and just dump it in there and you can see how that works. So we're injecting a seed. This one's called sjob1. You could of course call it anything you like but it's a good way to be able to, well it is the way to be able to go and find um, the job that you've just run. Um, and so keep an eye on what you call it trying if you're going to crawl a load of stuff come up with a convention of some sort because that way you can obviously come back and find what you're after before we run the job um let's just have a quick look at solar 
and you can see there's like one entry now in there which is isi.edu and the status is unfetched and then a whole bunch of metadata about when i you know created it and that type of thing and then we're going to quickly run the job so again the id is sjob1 but this time we're going to crawl that domain and that ran once um, and so that just went to basically went to isi.edu and then tried to find as many links and information as humanly possible. So if I scroll down this, you can see suddenly there's a whole bunch of different records inside the core. You can see it's found 50. So if I just expand this query somewhat, um, yeah, you can see how as I scroll my way through it, there is entry after entry. And these are all unfetched because they were found during that initial crawl. If I just make this a bit bigger so you can see it. They were they were found during the first crawl. So they haven't been fetched. Um, and then eventually when I reached the bottom down here, somewhere, there we go, uh, there is a fetched URL. And that is the output of the actual initial seeded query that we did. So if I just change this to do um, status uh, fetched, that then gives us just the single response back. Um, if we just open, zoom out, let me open this in another window, which will make it easier to uh, see. Uh, you can see in here where there are now a whole bunch of outlinks, which are obviously the links it found on the website. Um, so a load of metadata in the header, um, fetch information. Um, and as we scroll down, you can see, you know, there is content type you can filter on mime type type of things because it's not just for textual direct html textual stuff you might be pdfs or image extraction that type of thing um but then down the bottom you can see the extracted text and so that uses the great um, apache tika and i've just updated this to latest 124 so this is as good as it gets um, and you can see how it's extracted all the information out of the website and then stuck it in the extracted text um, field. Um, so, you know, there's an awful lot of information just from crawling that one page um, that can then be used for, you know, more processing, further processing for machine learning stuff or, you know, knowledge graph generation a whole host of different reasons to use this extracted text. Um, actually, you can see some um, like COVID-19 is like front and center of that um, search. Um, so, you know, very quickly, it's easy to extract information um, in a very succinct manner, just using Sparkler and one line to crawl that, um, that single website. Um, you know, you can also obviously use it for extracting metadata from web pages. So you can see there's like the description and, um, you know, content location, but, um, you know, it's quite powerful. So what we're going to have a quick look at is the configuration, because there's a few interesting bits and pieces you should probably be aware of before you start um, doing this for real. So the top of the configuration file is largely about um, Solar and Spark and Kafka, if you choose to use it, um, which unless, of course, you, you're scaling to like hyperscale, you should probably just leave alone. Um, there's some grouping stuff that you can tweak if you want to have a go with um, rankings and groupings and that type of thing. What's more useful down here, though, is the fetcher information. So you can um, set a delay because you don't want to swamp someone else's servers because that's not nice. Um, but also you can set the headers, which for masquerading as a legitimate um, web user is obviously quite important. You can also use the user agents.txt and just uncomment that line. And that will allow you to set an unlimited amount of user agents in a text file, which Sparkler will then iterate through um to simulate multiple different browsers from the same place 
hitting um, the website that it's crawling. Which can be quite useful if you're trying to get around people blocking, um, you know, repeated requests and that type of thing. Um, but you might also find that you get rate limited from using uh, the same IP and stuff. So when I was doing things the other day, I used Elastic IPs and cycled them. Da further down, you can find uh, various plugins that you can enable or disable. So the same host plugin is uh, pretty obvious. It limits the crawl to the same domain that you have chosen to crawl. There's also uh, regex, which allows you to limit via regex the outbound links that it's picking up or those outlinks that you saw. Um, and so you can change that old filtered text file and make it more or less intelligent. Then there's also the fetches, and the fetches are important because in the, these days where so many websites are AJAX-driven, um, you can't necessarily just crawl them um, by default. So the plugin that is enabled by default is by far the fastest performing plugin. So if you can extract the information that you require using the defaults, then leave it at that because it uses the least resource, just renders HTML and just scrapes whatever it needs. But there are obviously times where your Ajax driven uh, website requires you to actually render it before you can extract the information. And so there are four in total different plugins for this. JBrowser being one, HTML user unit being the next, WebDriver, and then Chrome. And they sort of go in that order in terms of the weight that is required for them to operate. Um, so depending on what your source is and what you're trying to crawl, um, you'll find that different fetches work better than others. And so, you know, it's not a one size fits all because every website is different. But if you try to crawl every website using like a full on Chrome browser, your crawl would be very slow. Um, but it would also collect collect the largest amounts of information from Ajax websites. So, you know, you've got to find that balance between actually getting the information you need and um, the right browser speed. If you want to extend it, you certainly can do. There's lots of um, useful, the you know, the plugins, Sparkler plugins directory has all these plugins in. And so if you wanted to extend it, you can just go and have a nosy round like this regex one um, and just, you know, pull out the information. You can then go and tweak it because it's just interface driven. So just go and change a plugin or, you know, copy and extend a plugin and it will largely do exactly what you're after um so you know if there's something that you're trying to do in terms of either passing the urls or passing the data that's coming in or having a different way of being able to collect that data um then have a look in the plugins directory um because there's an awful lot of samples so there we go um i should also mention that I used SU at the start and just passed in one URL. If you have a whole bunch of different templates, um, different URLs from like a template that you do want to just collect like one, like, you know, iteration of or something, you can use minus SF and pass in like a, a, a text file that's just got a URL on each row. Um, and then you could obviously use it to crawl hundreds of distinct URLs from that site. So like I said, the wiki is a bit hit and miss. We need to certainly need to update it. Um, so you'll find that uh, we will be updating it over the next uh, few weeks as I dump some more stuff into it. Um, if you want to get further involved, then obviously you can ask questions on GitHub. Um, but also there's a USC data science Slack channel where a few of us kick around in. So if you can subscribe to USC Data Science Slack channel, um, you'll find us inside of Sparkler and you'll find us having a little natter about what's going on and what our plans are. Um, so, you know, we're certainly going to be updating stuff over the next few weeks. I hope that's been of use. Um, you know, if you have any questions, then feel free to drop them in the uh, comments below or join the Slack channel or find me on Twitter at Magical Trout. Um, you know, I'm all over the place. So there we go. Thanks for watching and bye for now.